clean up security and deploying to Amazon AWS S3. In this section, we're going to take a look at securing our Firebase API from unauthenticated and unauthorized users, code cleanup and updating styling, and finally building and deploying our application to Amazon AWS S3. Backend security in Firebase's Firestore. In this video, we're going to take a look at logging into Firebase, and finally, updating security rules in our Firestore database. We'll just return a Boolean, which will be determined by the request coming in, dot auth, which contains all the auth properties on the request. And as long as it doesn't equal null, we'll return true. If it does equal null, then we'll return false. So that'll be a quick helper function that allows us to tell if a user is authenticated. Now let's check if a user is authorized, and we want to pass in a user ID. And here, we're going to actually use that auth property and check the UID. And if you remember when a user is created, a user gets a UID property, stand for user ID. And we'll check if it's equal to the user ID that gets passed in. That should determine if they're authorized. If they match the user ID that we pass in is the same one on the request, then we know it's the person making the change and not somebody else making the change on their behalf. So great. So let's come down here. So this part's fine, matching on documents. And now we can start nesting some matching clauses. So if we have here, we can say, want to match on chat rooms. And these can be variables here they put between the brackets. So match on chat room slash chat room ID. And we don't want everybody to be able to write to those. We're going to just say read, but only if the person making the request is authenticated. Great. Then nested inside here, want to match on slash messages. And we'll say the message. You could say message ID, I suppose. And here I will say it will allow read again if is. And you're probably thinking this should cascade down. If you can read the chat room and chat room ID, you should be able to read the messages. Well, not the, quite the case because the way Firebase uh, handles things, it does a shallow kind of authentication. So it doesn't allow you to fetch deeply nested properties. So if you remember our chat rooms had a bunch of information about them, like a name, not a bunch, but had a name in the chat room. It had a messages, which is a sub collection of chat rooms. And so you wouldn't be able to actually read down into those. So we also want some people to be able to write. So you should be able to post a message in a chat room if you're authorized. And in this case, meaning you are the person who is writing the message. We don't want you to be able to write messages on behalf of somebody else because they could say whatever they wanted to say then make it look like you said it. So here we'll pass in quest.resource. So resource will be the file we're actually accessing dot data and then the property sender dot ID. So that will get passed in here to our user ID and we'll make sure the person making the request, their user ID matches the one in the file you're about to write to. So perfect. That's looking good. Great. Now let's create another match clause. This will be for slash users. I need this message ID, I suppose. We don't want to use it in there, but just to follow the same practices here. And we'll say allow update. Say update slash write if the user is authorized. And we'll pass in the user ID. Great. So you should be able to write to your profile and update it if you are the authorized user. And we'll allow reads if you're authenticated. So you can view somebody's profile, but if you want to write to it and update their information, you're going to need to be the actual user making the request. So your user ID here will need to match the one on the request. Perfect. So now we should have some better authentication. We'll just click publish. And now our web app is a little more secure now, especially on the back end.